And hello everybody, it is just a hair before 7 o'clock, and I was so excited I couldn't stand it, so I started now. Um, it's been two long weeks since uh, last streamed, and it's very exciting to be back. I'm Nick McPhee, this is Unhindered by Coding, going to live stream here for two hours doing stuff. Um, in particular, today's stuff is going to be trying to improve the uh, notion of genomes um, in our implement. Well, so we'll be working on our implementation of evolution and computation in Rust, um, which we've now been working on for a couple months on and off. Well, hello, is it too? Wonderful to see you again. Um, and uh, we're going to continue to work on that. Um, and I'm actually pretty happy with some of the cool stuff that's going on there. And I'm looking forward to more cool stuff happening today on that front. Um, I should be back on sort of a regular schedule, uh, at least until we leave again for the winter break, uh, which will be, um, probably somewhere in mid to two thirds of the way through December. Um, so I'm guessing we'll have two-ish weeks, maybe three, probably not three full weeks, somewhere between two and three weeks of uh, regular streaming, um, and then we'll head to Wisconsin to see family, and I'm not sure what will happen there. Maybe I'll uh, try to do some streaming, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, we'll work on stuff. Uh, so I think we'll probably focus on um, this project and try to come back to the GitHub uh, archiving project, um, ICE repos. Uh, I really would like that's you know, the basic project is like so close and I just got all hung up on the OAuth and... I've got a bunch of stuff to read. Um, I feel like in some ways the architecture is fundamentally problematic. Um, and I almost wonder if... So a lot of the problems I'm having just trying to work on it is getting Cloudflare development and GitHub OAuth to talk to each other. I get all kinds of errors where GitHub can't seem to find OAuth or is sending th or Cloudflare or is sending things that Cloudflare doesn't like. And maybe Cloudflare is just, it's like I'm letting myself get too stuck on that part of the project when that was really not what I wanted to be doing at all. Um, so I might try a different alternative uh, like a simple DigitalOcean droplet or something like that as a, as a very easy way to try to get something up and running. Um, but uh, we'll, we can come back to that on Saturday morning. But I think I'll probably do this and this on Wednesday, the evolution computation on Wednesday and Saturday afternoons and continue to do ICE repos on Tuesday mornings and Saturday mornings um, uh, if I feel like I can make progress on that. Um, so, uh, we should get started. Um, so there's actually a whole bunch of things we could possibly do today. Um, the, back over to the code. Um, so on the last stream, which was now, uh, several weeks ago, um, the most, well, the main thing we did was we got rid of a bunch of type declarations. I had, uh, several pub type blah, blah, blahs, um, for like selectors and things related to selectors. Uh, and we removed all of those and replaced them with traits. And I think got to a much better place. So let's see, I can go over selectors. So we've got this selector trait um, and we have things that implement that selector trait. And I think that that, and it also moved 
the selectors out of population and into their own uh, types. And I think that that's definitely um, uh, an improvement. So I was very happy with that. Um, and there I, I looked, sorry, over here, and there is exactly one more type left. And it is this bit string equals vec bool. Um, there have been a lot of discussion on Discord about alternative ways to handle this, uh, independent of the fact that it's like declared as a type. Um, so, for example, using uh, fixed length arrays instead of vectors uh, for the Booleans because we know how long they need to be. Um, so, in principle, there's no reason we couldn't do them as Booleans. Um, and I feel like there probably is a, an opportunity here to make some traits and then have the fixed length Booleans be probably wrapped in some type that implements these traits um, so we can use them in the appropriate places. And it would, the traits idea I think makes sense because there are certain evolutionary computation systems that use fixed length traits. All the arrays are the same length, easy peasy. So you basically have one type that would be reused everywhere. Um, and uh, you wouldn't end up with a bunch of different arrays, sized arrays, each of which Rust would treat as a different type. And therefore you get different implementations of a lot of uh, dependent types if somebody took uh, one of these as a generic parameter, then you'd end up with multiple implementations, one for each of the lengths. And that wouldn't come up in most fixed length TA systems. So I think that there's probably a trait for like fixed length linear genome. And then there's probably another trait for variable length linear genome, which we probably want to implement with a vector um, since we don't know up front how long that's going to be. Um, so I think there are some interesting things that we can do here. Um, a question that I have um, for the audience, in case anybody's got thoughts, um, I noticed looking at some other Rust code, um, including some of the stuff that Izitsu had shared on uh, Discord, um, this way of declaring structures with an unnamed internal field. And I've been doing this approach where my structs have a named internal field. And I was just curious if there's some sort of like best practice around this. Um, I must say that you know, self.score gets a little long, but self.0 doesn't read well. Um, so if anybody's got any thoughts on that, feel free to share. Um, it's not a huge deal, um, but I figured I would raise the question um, in case anybody's like got a burning ax to grind there. Um, and then the other thing before we get to the the types oh um uh so is it so has suggested a preference for this unless i had plans to add more fields later so hmm i i find the unless i had plans to be an interesting piece of that statement. My experience with programming is that what I have plans to do and what I actually do are really the same thing. Um, and that if the door is open to expanding on something, then that can often be useful. So creating the type, creating the helper function, um, that that you that creates opportunities for other things to happen, 
And so I guess, you know, my gut response to that would be then I would mostly do this because I don't know what my plans are in the future. Um, and I guess re the refactoring from this, well, you'd have to change a bunch of dot zero to dot scores. And if you just add another field to this, you don't have to make any changes to any reference, any reference to score. So, hmm, I will contemplate that. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. But the other thing before we get into the the bit fields or bit strings is uh, in the um, Discord. Uh, Zitsu shared a pretty nifty uh, way of getting rid of this lifetime. So when we made a bunch of changes, um, we ended up with a bunch of lifetimes in a bunch of places. Um, and in particular, for example, we need that this selector and the child maker have to have the same lifetime. So we need to end up, or have to have the same lifetime as the generation. Um, so we end up with these lifetimes floating around all over the place. And there's a lot of them, um, or a lot of occurrences of them is probably a better way to put it. And um, Zitsu had uh, shared uh, a, a code snippet, uh, but a self-contained and working code snippet. <laughs> Uh, that managed to avoid this. Um, and the the real trick, I think, is um, he uh, implemented select. So we've got this selector trait, which was introduced uh, in the last stream, which is now three weeks ago. Um, and, uh, he did a nifty thing where, um, he did simple selector for dine selector. Uh, and so we're implementing the trait selector for the type that is a dynamic reference to a selector. So that we, we want, if we have a dynamic reference to a selector, we can use it effectively as a selector. Um, and that turns out to mean that we can, over in generation, where we have this reference to a dynamic, a dynamic reference to a selector, we can just replace that with a selector and and avoid then the reference and the lifetime. And then when we create the generation, we can slide in a reference to a, a dynamic reference to a selector because over here we're saying a dynamic reference to a selector can be used as a selector when necessary. And that allows us to not have to have the dynamic reference here, which then avoids the need for the lifetime. And I'm guessing, and this is the goal, I think, is that if we do something like this for both selector and child maker, then we can have selector be colon, just capital S selector and child maker colon, capital C child maker. And then this lifetime disappears here and we can get rid of it here and in all the other places where generation has lifetimes. Um, so those lifetimes will all just disappear. And that could be quite nifty. Um, so that's actually what I want to start with today is see if I can actually play that out um, and make that work. And then depending on how long that takes and where that takes us, then we might return to the bit string question, uh, which I also would like to work on. So, um, okay, so let's see if we can make that happen. 
Um, and so the implement so to implement the trait selector, we're going to need a function that takes reference to self and a uh, random number generator and the population that is dependent on uh, the type G, which is the genome type, and the type R, which is the result type of the test. Oh, and I was going to actually start to see if I could do a better job of saying this was pop as a way of indicating that the lifetime there was the lifetime of the population. Um, uh, is it who did that in an example on Discord? And I was like, oh, yeah, because I keep using these single letter names. And like G and R, the fact that I think a second about what G and R were is also not awesome. But typing out genome and result type seems kind of long. So I don't know. But in this case, there was no good reason not to just do pop. So I'm going to do pop. And we're then going to return um, a reference lifetime pop to an individual gr. So, burr, burr, burr. so that's what we need to uh, implement and because self is a dynamic reference to a selector, we can just have use its select, right? Because this is a selector, it provides selection. Um, and so all we need to do is dereference self to get through the dynamic reference um, and then call select population and the random number generator. And that should then uh, select an individual. However, oh, I need selector. Uh, I need to bring G and R in here. And I need here. Boom. Uh, and that also probably needs to be G and R. Boom. Do, 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 So all of that's happy. This is not. Uh, expected random number generator found population. Oh, did I just get the order wrong? Yeah, so, oh, okay. So, um, Azitsu's code fragment and my code have the random number generator and the population in opposite orders. Um, and I am happy to um, so do you have a reason why you preferred it that way? I mean, I can totally hear the, see the argument either way. Um, uh, do I care personally? I mean, I guess your way does have the advantage that it sort of makes it clear that select is acting on a population. Um, yeah. And then, because like in, oh, no, random does use. Um, but best doesn't. Yeah. So best, here the, the underscore is the f first argument, not the second argument. Um, so that is actually a reasonable argument. Hmm. Well, maybe I will do, let me, let's get this to work and then I might come back and do that. Let me at a minimum put a, yet another to do on this. Um, of RNG and population arguments. Boom. Uh, yeah. Okay, so in my case, this is going to be um, 
population and then whoa what? oh yeah it's gonna be rng rng boom okay yay so that takes care of that and then that means we can go into generation and change this to just be a selector gr and then when we construct it um we should be able to right? so trait objects must include the dying keyword oh so i guess we do have to have dine here So this actually, this isn't going to work because we have two dynamically sized types because the selector and the child maker, we'd have to do both, do this trick on both of these. And we don't know which, oh, oh, or we have another, oh, I see. You did it. I'm looking at your code fragment again. You do have then another generic. So you have like S and S will be the selector type. And then we'd end up with C here and C would be the child maker type. Uh, so we'd end up with something that looks like that. which is we get rid of this, but we trade in, um, yeah, I hadn't actually twigged that, that, that was that generic was there to say, we don't care that this type will be specified when we actually set things up. Um, and it's a dependent type in the generic. That is a lot of... Uh, I don't know that that actually wins a lot. Um, that's a, It was a nifty thing to see. Um, but, you know, we're going to go from AGR to GRSC everywhere. And I don't know that that's a huge improvement. Um... So, I don't know, maybe I'm going to let that go. And I might come back to it. Um, but I think that's not going to be a thing that I'm going to do at the moment. Um, there we go. So that's all back to there. And then we don't arguably need this anymore. I don't know where this would be used at the moment. Um, so that's an interesting question about whether population should be a trait. Um, I sort of wonder if population should be a trait. Um, so you know, again, I've got a raw type here. It's not like a, a pub type like bit vector what is bit string. Um, but I do sort of feel like this locks us down to a particular implementation. Whereas if population was a trait, we would potentially have more flexibility. Um, And what I'm not clear on then is like one could sort of approach this from two directions. One could make population a trait 
and then see how that affects the genomes of the individuals in the population. Actually, arguably individuals should perhaps be a trait. Um, uh, oh. Population. So individual would sort of wrap this G Yeah. Uh, so you wouldn't need that. So, yeah, so we could turn population into a trait. We could turn individual into a trait, which I kind of feel like maybe needs to happen too. Or we could turn bit string into a trait and see where that takes us. And I think they're all interesting and we're going to have to choose. Um, and I don't know, this is like whether we're better off going from the bottom up or the top down um, and which is going to be the most informative and drive the train better. I kind of feel like maybe going from the population down um, makes the most sense. Hmm. <laughs> so if we had let's think about what does the population need to do it needs to be able to we need to be able to create a new one um we need to be able to see if it's empty and how, how big it is and we currently have a best individual in it so we don't have to it doesn't have to do a great deal um right now um, and this would be basically an implementation of like VEC population or something, um, would have these particular concrete methods in. <laughs> And then how would that affect things? If the individual was a trait, or if population, uh, population was a, whoa, oh, go away. Uh, population was a trait, then that would affect generation because now this would be a thing that implements, um, Yeah, so the pub populations, individuals. So where can I actually look at that? Go to references. Will that do a thing? Oh, look at that. Um, so it's used in population. That's not surprising. It's used in selectors a lot. Which isn't surprising because we're selecting things from that collection of individuals. It's used in generation. In. Uh, getting. The individuals out as the previous collection of individuals. Here, let's close this. And then in making the new collection of individuals, and it's referenced here. Oh, interesting. So I think these are in tests. Yeah, I think these are all in tests. There's a bunch of tests that 
uh, are checking that if we do certain things, um, we will uh, get reasonable results. So is it so you said if you set individuals to private, ah, then it could be a oh that's a that's a good strategy. I like that. That's a very nice strategy. So if we take the pub off of this and then chase the various um, uh, errors that come up, uh, we can see what um, we need from it. And that'll tell us kind of what kinds of methods it needs. So this suggests we want an is empty on the population. Did we have one? I think we had one and I wasn't using it. Look at that. We had one and I wasn't even using it. Duh. That's not good. And so choose Now that one's a little trickier. Um, we could, because this is um, a method that comes from the Rand slice business, um, slice random, and it's we would probably need to have something like choose just in the population um, that would call through. And I think we had a conversation about maybe even implementing slice random for population, but that there's too much going on in slice random that we probably don't want. Rust slice random. I think there's fair number of obligations. Yeah, so we'd have to implement all of this stuff if we wanted a population to uh, implement slice random. Which might be a little heavyweight um, for what we're trying to do. Um, now, so another possibility, instead of explicitly moving choose into individuals, do we want to be able to get an iterator, um, oh, choose multiple weighted, um, returns a slice choose iter, uh, Oh, that looks like that could be complicated. Um, yeah, so don't think we want to go down that road. Um, but we could, instead of having um, moving choose into individuals, we could have something in the population that we can call choose on, like an iterator. Um, so we could have the ability to get an iterator out of a population, um, or, yeah, I feel like that might be the easiest thing to do. Let, let's look at the other places where this didn't compile. Oh, this one, we already, we know how to deal with that. And length, I feel like I've done I did length already uh, size I called it size which I think is better so that can get removed replaced with size and choose multiple okay so here again we're gonna have this problem of choosing um, and ah and here we have to be able to get a vector of the individuals, which if we could get an iterator, we could, well, a vector of references to individuals, um, then we could uh, collect those. Um, 
And I think that's all the compile errors in this file. And then this file has this one where we have to have access to the previous individuals. We could get this is population size. Self.population.size. Um, and then what do we do with previous individuals? We, what do we do with them? Where did, where's that? We must pass them to make Huh, what do we do with previous individuals? Nothing, directly. Is that really true? Like if I comment this out, does that just go away? Oh, that's weird. So all we, I think all we did with it was get the um, size and we have a size method. Well, that's silliness. I think it, oops, undo. I think at some point earlier, I think Childmaker took the array of individuals maybe. Um, and then that got removed and Childmaker took the generation instead. And that passed essentially the set of individuals across. So yeah, we don't need that anymore. And I bet the same thing happens here. So this can be self.pop. Population, and this can be size and this can be commented out and it still compiles okay so that cleans that up that's definitely an improvement and now the only thing that doesn't compile is the selectors interesting I was thinking, oh, but all those all those tests in main must fail to compile now, right? Um, I would think, yeah. I mean, all this has got to not compile. It's probably just not checking the test compilation um, in VS Code at the moment, so I'm not seeing what's going on there. But we can focus for the moment on the production code. So selectors, we do have um, places where we need an iterator um, and oh, actually let's view problems because we can. So we need, we've got a choose, choose multiple, an iterator, and. Are you just, I think you're just grumpy because of the other stuff. Um, so I think we'll ignore you for the moment. So we have iterator and some choosy stuff and iterators can, we can call, um, So I think we can call these things on slice random. So maybe just getting an iterator out of it. Um, so you say iterator random. Oh, yes, it's got choose and choose multiple which are really the only two things we need. And it's an extension trade on iterators. Ah, excellent. So implement on all iterators uh, where the thing is sized. So we'd have to bring in iterator random. So if, um, 
population, we can now um, g r population g r um, and oh, I'm implementing. I don't want to implement iterator random. I just want to return an iterator random, right? Pub fun. So I can just return an iterator. And then as long as I've imported iterator random, I ought to be able to do choose and choose multiple on that iterator. So, um, yeah. So we just want to return an iter iterator that takes a reference to self and returns um, uh, an iterator, iterator. What's the type? Type is iterator. And I want to return uh, self.individuals.iter. And I probably got this type wrong, but now at least it'll tell me what. Uh, oh, I must specify the item type. Um, so this has to be item equals in reference to individual gr. Boom. No. Uh, and it needs to return trait objects. Why, why are we talking about a trait object here? Trait objects must include the dying keyword. Oh, because iterator is a trait. No, not that. Oh, is size not implemented? Oh, so I need to use. So you're, you're suggesting I need to use standard slice. I'll just put it here because slice iter. No, that was not winning. Is that maybe not even what you meant? Boom, 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 boom. Um, cap, oh, the oh, look, that's uh, except is this should this be just iter? I think I'm I get confused about whether we're doing iterator, iter or iterator, because it seems like both happen. Rust, iter. No, it is capital, it's written out. So that's not the it. And then return that iter type. Do I need Are you suggesting iterator random? Or that I need the sized in? Cuz it does seem to be unhappy about the sized. Because 
because it's dynamic. Uh, iter a something like that. Well, here, let's try it. Iter, boom. Oh, actually, it tried to fill something in. Hang on, what did it try to? Oh, maybe it didn't. Uh, and then individual gr. You suggested I was going to need a lifetime, but actually it didn't fuss about that. So, okay, what is iter? It's a mutable slice iterator. Oh. So this, okay. So iterator is the trait. Iter is the struct returned by iterating on slices. Okay. I think that's where... Uh, so iter returns a capital I iter value, which implements the iterator trait. Okay. Weird. No, not weird, actually, but... I think that is something I did not understand very well. The distinction between iterator and iter. And I'm sure it's in the documentation if uh, there must be an example I think of an iter or maybe not. Um, so actually this scrolling through this reminds me of another thing is would it make sense to have population implement the trait into iterator so that if I just so then I can just use a population anywhere that I was expecting an iterator of individual references um and then I wouldn't need this explicit iter method. Um, I would just be able to use a population in a place where I was expecting an iterator. And I feel like we had... Um, Okay, yeah. So the fact that the individuals are references would complicate that is the argument. Because it just it feels like that would be really clean to be able to think that a population was an iteratable thing of individuals feels very natural to me. Um, uh, so, eh. uh, but maybe we leave that be for now. Okay, so that did work. And now in theory, I ought to be able to, oh, but actually this iterator ought to be references to individuals, right? And maybe that's the lifetime I needed. Maybe that's the lifetime I needed. Uh... Oh, expected an iterator over references to individuals. Oh, but an iterator always returns references. So I don't think I need that. Um, yeah. So, okay, I think I can leave that be. And then we can go through. And now in theory iter boom choose 
Oops, that goes away. Now this is going to require uh, iterator random, yes. So we're going to have to grab that. Oh, did it want to quick fix that for me? Do I trust it? Yes, totally. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Uh, so basically, where I have individuals, I just should say iter. And I think that will mostly do the right thing, but then it didn't do the right thing here. It got unhappy. Um, Diver. This function takes one argument, but zero were. So we're getting a different max. We're not getting max over the. So that changed. And that was this. Oh, well, nothing compiled, so who knows? Um, but. This is a vector of references, which makes sense. But max, what is max's deal here? Look, the totally the wrong max is being called. We want the max, oh, this isn't an iterator anymore. Oh, choose multiple is, uh, let's see. Returning a vec, not an iterator. Whereas it must have been doing um, a, must have been returning an iterator before. So we have to convert it to one. And now all that's good. Whew. That's weird. And then this actually just becomes that. And aha, now, so we, we're going to need some kind of constructory thing so that we can build these because both of these uses are going to be broken. So population, and we've used new to be the generation of a new random population, which is not really what, well, it's definitely not what we want here. Um, and maybe that's just not the best name for that. Maybe that name really ought to change. Um, and maybe that should be new random, and then we can have new. Um, Impl from iterator. Ooh. So I think you're sug um, suggesting that we could construct a population from an iterator of individuals. So sort of in the same way that I wanted to think about a population could be an iterator, here we could say an iterator could be a population and we could consume the elements in that iterator and then that would just make a population here. Uh, I like that idea, actually. I think that's cool. Let's try that. Um, so, impl, we're going to need a whole lot of stuff here, but um, uh, from, from iterator for population, and we'll need, the impl's going to need a G and an R, and then uh, that is going to require something. 
let's let the world tell us what it needs. So we need a from iter method that takes um, an iterator of t's and returns a self. So this would be self individuals and here we would take the iter and can we just dot collect? No, but item needs to be, we need to tell it what the item is. So this is going to be an individual um, gr. And from iter is not happy. Missing generics. Uh, oh, so we just need to say from. Uh, oh, A was individual. Ooh. So actually, can we simp? No, we, this needs to be explicit. So does this have to be from iterator individual? Individual gr boom. Okay. Um, so if we have something that is an iterator over individuals, then we will com we can convert that into a population by running through the iterator, collecting the results. And setting that to be the individuals and then we return that that's kind of nifty i like that and then these two problems uh do we just say individuals and it knows how to turn that iterator into except it didn't it got very grumpy uh Population from parallel iterator individual gr is not satisfied. Well, that's annoying. Um, let's see, trade bound population gr from popul from parallel iterator individual gr is not satisfied. So we need a parallel. Oh, so it might have worked. This one might work. If I undo this for a hot sec, then it'll move the error to just here. And here, this one, because it's not parallel, might actually work. And it looks like it does. So the problem was we also need to deal with parallel iterators here. We're going to need another impl. Um, uh, so you're suggesting short answer collect to a vec. And then into it or that. But yeah, it doesn't know what this is when I do that. Oops, little r, big r, whatever. And Oh. Oh, it's not. Yo, know, yes, it is. We're collecting. Do we not? Do we not even need to? Oh, is the problem that we're collecting? Do we not even need to collect? 
And we could leave it as an iterator. Like if I just get rid of collect here, no, it didn't like that. Because that's not just an iter type, it's some complicated thing coming out of maps. And I'd have to do something to deal with that. So let's put that back. And then uh, your suggestion is to move to rearrange the order. Okay, that would make more sense. Ah, cool. So that, so we took the individuals, which was a vector, and then we made them into an iterator, and then we, so but that just seems, and that is a vector of individuals of type of G and R, and That seems weird to me. And if we wanted a vec, So you, you think the compiler is going to like turn this into it or collect thing and basically just wash it away. Um, and let me come back to population. So from an iterator over individuals And down here, we can just say individuals. But up here, we've got to do all this weird stuff. Okay, I'm going to just, I want to look at this again. So it's not happy. Because it found a vector. And a vector is not an iterator. And we've said how to construct it from an iterator. But, uh, so individuals is a population. Oh. So individuals here is a population. And so this actually is just a straight, like this is a type population and here's a population. Oh, is the collect here turning? Oh, the collect is taking this item iterator over items of individuals and turning it into a population because, um, yeah, so it called from iterator and that turned our iterator over items or individuals into a population. So this now really is a population and I can't do that here because it doesn't this doesn't convert this into a population it leaves it as a vector of individuals because this isn't an iter it's this other funky do thing 
And then uh, that gets us into this problem. Okay. So you're suggesting the remove the type annotation and impl. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and impl from parallel iterator here. And then that will hopefully fix things over there from parallel iterator g r oh in the uh, individual i'm just assuming that i'll need the same stuff um for population g r and then we'll have to say implement some things that we're not oh hey R cannot be sent me through. Oh, okay. So we're gonna have to do some thread safety stuff. So R needs to be send. Um, that doesn't surprise me. And G also needs to be send. That also doesn't surprise me. And now we should just be missing. Uh, yep. Implement the missing item. Okay, so we're implementing from par iter, which takes a par iter i, and it also should be basically the same thing. Uh, they called it par iter um, dot. Uh, into par iter dot collect bingity 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 and now over here I take this out and yep now the collect is able to call from par iter, iter give us a population and we're good to bing okay and now i've got a bazillion failed things in main uh, i probably should fix these size and ooh well, I guess I can say iter oops, dot first, maybe? Nope. Next. And next is, that's going to fail because next is returning an option. Yeah. So I'll have to unwrap. Yeah. Uh. And do I do this a million times? I do do this a million times. So let's actually write a little function inside this module. Where does this module start? <sighs> Fn first individual takes a population. Oh. Do, 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 do. Mm. Yeah, I could do that everywhere here, couldn't I? And here. Yeah. So maybe that's just the thing to do. Well, I think I'm still going to make a little function. First individual takes uh, a pop population yeah um, pop population and returns a reference to an individual 
schedule and I guess we're, we'll have to do some angle brackety fun here in a little bit uh, we're gonna return pop dot iter dot next boom right and that's just what we did wherever we did it oh unwrap we gotta unwrap also next dot unwrap and we're gonna have to then have this take g n r g n r oops and g n r and it didn't like that oh uh all right, I can't turn a reference. Oh, man. Right, this little function's turning. Yeah. Oh, good point. I hadn't thought about the fact that each next would advance the iterator. That is going to get me in all kinds of trouble, isn't it? Okay. Back to not do that. Uh, so let first individual be all of this business yeah you are completely right i had not thought about the fact that i was going to keep calling next over and over again and get myself in all kinds of trouble oh sigh um and that would be here that fixes all of those. Oops. Uh, and here fixes that one. And then we have to do the same thing. Let first individual. This was pop dot size. And then we'll. Paste that guy in there. And then we have a whole lot of this going on. I should do a copy. Maybe I should do a copy paste. I'm going to search for place because that is getting to be kind of silly. Uh, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Looks like it all compiles. And then let's run our test for fun. Cargo test. Hey, our test still pass. Yay, team. Okay. Well, that was a lot. Um, wow, it's after eight already. Um, I think that means we should probably commit because we made many of the changes. So the main thing we did was we made individuals private and that then led to a lot of other changes that were necessary. Um, the main one being the introduction of the iterator and the from iterator implementations in population. And most of the rest of it was pretty straightforward. What happened here? Oh, that was just me putting in a comment. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, and I still have this. I thought I'd gotten rid of that. Hmm. I'm going to discard that hunk for now. Um, and then the rest of this is, I think, pretty straightforward. Okay. Stage all of this. So, uh, make 
individuals field private in population um, in moving towards making population a trait we made the individuals field private and then fixed all the resulting compilation errors compilation errors um, most of these were pretty straightforward lots of uses of the existing and underused is empty and size methods um, uh, the most complicated bit was implementing let's see from iterator ooh not from from iterator and from parallel iterator uh, and adding an iter method to population. Boom. Okay. Voila. So now, oh, I just committed that in the wrong branch. Well, life's a challenge. I will deal with that later. Um, so then the point of all this was to try to get population to be a struct instead of a, a, a trait instead of a struct. And by making this private, we now have more clarity on what that trait would have to do. Um, oh yeah, so you're suggesting, oh, did, oh, no. I actually made the selector, I, I meant to not, I totally discarded it, I think, and that was not my intention, but I think that's what happened, yes actually made that go away because um, I'm not using it anywhere. Um, nothing is actually um, using the selector for Dyne selector um, because when we got into it, there were all the um, additional uh, generics. And so um, I've just sort of removed that for now, unless you can see a reason that we will find it useful somewhere and it's worth putting it back in, but it certainly wasn't being used anywhere at this point. Um, so if we were to tradeify population, right. Okay. Well, we can, um, well, maybe, mm, yeah, let, let's let's have it sort of show up when we need it. Um, uh, might be better motivated, certainly in my head then. So now if we, so if we want to make population a trait, let's start actually by, we rename this, rename symbol, um, uh, back population and now oh interesting it doesn't like uh, Clippy's warning in another window that this item name ends in the modules module name um, which Clippy doesn't like and I could just call this vec or vector, but then it collides with the um, 
Nay, you know, the, the regular, yeah, I was thinking actually VEC pop might be the thing to do. Let's do that. Um, VEC pop. And then I feel like in some ways we're just like fooling Cl Clippy's limited knowledge of English. Um, but, yeah, Clippy. Um, so then we could actually say uh, trait population and we can go through and think about well, what do we need this to to do um oh I, oh, I, I don't think I had, I think a light bulb has just gone off in my head that I had not fully grasped here that we, by saying type individual here, we're hiding all the generics. Yeah, the G and the R probably, because I don't think any of the methods we care about um, are going to need to know about G or R. And, oh, that, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes it so much nicer. Oh, you're so smart. Well done. Yay, team. This is very exciting. So we'll need things like is empty, right? That's a simple one. Um... And that's going to take a self and return a bool, right? And a size that's going to take a self and return, what did I say, U size? Yeah, U size. Oops. So we'll have things like that. And then we're going to imp. So down, so we'll have to impl, I guess that would be down here. We would say things like impl, woo, help, impl population for vecpop. Uh, oh, and I guess we would be able to say here gr. And then it's going to be like, you didn't implement all the things. So we'd say, great, we'll implement the things. And so the type is uh, okay. Now, gr. Oops, I didn't like that. Oh, type individual equals, duh. And then we would say individuals dot and oh no is empty right Oops. of self dot individuals <laughs> boom 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 and self dot individuals dot len. Move is empty to a default impl in the trait. Oh. So we can actually provide a definition here if we want to. And since... Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we would say we would want to return size, self dot size is zero. Oh. 
And so then all we have to do is define size and is empty happens for free. Slick. That's very shiny. I like that. Okay, that's good. Now, we'll need to obviously add a bunch of stuff to this, to this trait and this. I want to think about where... So, what, what, what does this do to generation? So, population here is going to be of type... Is this going to be... Is generation going to like have a generic P and this is going to be P? And then we will slide in a um, implementation of population here or is this going to be a dine I probably need a thing and I guess that's going to be right Oh, because I made that private pub trait. And import. So it is just, we're just going to have P here. So this will be like um, your example is it so with the um, selector? Uh, so we'll end up with just P here, and then we will pass in a particular type when we make a generation, which is gonna be a dynamic reference to a population um, when we're actually constructing a generation. Okay. And then that's going to, so that's going to wander out across. And I, the, I assume the G and the R eventually will go away, but, um, uh, uh, oh, and we need P. Um, so we have to run this across the world. Um, Oh, so this is interesting. That actually compiled, which I didn't really expect it to. So it's putting a VecPop GR in here for population. And since that's a generic P, it's like, sure, we can do that. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking, because this is super generic, and this is a very specific thing. So maybe there are other compilation errors that are obscuring um, the issue. Ooh. So child maker depends on the type. Yeah, I guess it does, because it takes things out of that type. Um, okay, and this is going to need to be a P. And actually, I bet selector is going to break too. Um, so, 
Actually, I'm gonna go back to view problems. It's easier to find the. So that's gonna need to take P and that's gonna need to take P. Oops. And that means that's gonna need to take P and Ah, so here we make a concrete thing. So this is going to need to be a pop vec or vec pop of type G and R, which are bit string and test results are. And then this is going to need to be the same concrete type. Well, there we go. There we go. And, and now we're back here and it didn't work. Ha ha. Good job. Uh, and this is grumpy. Yeah, so there's no best individual. So that's a gap in the trait, which that's what I was ultimately hoping for, is that, you know, it would start to tell me things about what the trait needs. Um, and uh, those references don't line up. And that is... A problem of not knowing oh so okay here's a place where we need P um, hmm let me think about that should that trait have a best individual does population need to have a best individual Well, it's a thing we ask about populations a lot. Um, but we could also, we've got a selector that does best. And so we could use it to do that and not have it in the population, but use the selector when we need it. So that would be a potential solution. Um, to that problem. Um, so that we could make that go away by having a selector, an instance of the best selector or best individual, whatever I called it, best. Um, and using that to get the best individual out here. Um, and so question that I, I have looking at size here, because this is something simple. We've added size to the trait and we've implemented size. So do I just need to be saying here that P implements population? Um, but if I do that, I also have to say individual, individual equals individual GR. And does that then keep, I've got, I need one more close. Does this sort of keep the um, generics around, or when we turn this into a trait, we'll be able to hide some of this? 
Um, so I don't have to specify the associated type here. Oh, really? In theory, I could get away with like taking, I'd say probably be that. In theory, I could take that out. Ah, okay. But if I leave it in for now, I ensure that everything's lined up and then we can clean it up later. And now size works because we that is in the um, trait expectations. So we know that something, if P implements population, we can call size on it and life will be good. But we don't have the, um, some of the other things and that's causing some of these other pieces to fail. Um, Okay, well, this is kind of nifty. So let's go up to the top here. So let's, this is where we were. So here we are gonna need to say that P implements population of individual equals individual G R boom. And now, new, oh, this is taking a specific implementation of that. And, oh, that's interesting. So VecPop, VecPop does implement. Right? VecPop implements population. So, you can see that that would make sense. Okay, so the pro the reason this doesn't work, if I'm understanding things correctly, I can pass in a P because that's fine because this is P, types match, life is good. I can't pass this in because this is overly specific. It has... It's a bit like P is a fruit and this is a banana and we want something more general here and we can't pass in something more specific in the declaration. We can pass it in when we call it, so we can call it with a banana, but we have to say it's a fruit over here. And that's why this has to be a P. Okay. I think I understand that. And then this, uh, where does this get called? Do I actually care about this? Gets called in one place and that's when we print things out so in fact maybe we don't even need it to be in generation maybe we just want to have a best selector defined up here which we've got one and just use it on the population and then we could get rid of that method altogether um, so we could say best dot mm -hmm.
select RNG. Ooh. Do we have an RNG floating around? Uh, apparently we do. I don't immediately see it, but it's not yelling at me. And then generation dot population. Oh, no. We're not happy. Um, can't find RNG. So we probably want to declare that once up here. No, ooh, that was a bad idea. No, 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 didn't want to do that. What is the thingy that I do when I do that? Uh, uh, come on, where do I get one? I bet that's in generation, actually. In... Maybe... Somebody has to get one somewhere. Not there. Maybe it's in population. No. Where is it? It's not a generation. Ran through. Okay, thank you. I don't even remember where I was. I was in lib. Yes. Thread thread RNG. There we go. Uh, and then that takes care of that problem. Oh, and mute. Yeah. Always forget that. And then this is a reference, so I probably needed that. Look at that. Okay. So that's just for that problem. And then we could get rid of the uh, whole best individual thing because now nobody's using it. Voila. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. get parent. Oh, this is a P, not a vec pop and select wants a vec pop. So we're going to have to change the selector trait. Selector. This is going to need to become a, a, a P, right? And then we'll pass in, oh, a P that implements population. Uh, G and R. Oh, in, uh, individual equals individual G and R. Oops, too many. And then this will just become a P. A reference to P? No. Yes. Must be a reference to a P. Yeah, because we can't take the whole population and own it. That's never going to be a good plan. Um, and then that's going to have implications across selector. So we're going to need um, fix that. And then Oh, the reference is going to need a lifetime. I see. Yeah. Why did that not yell at me, actually? 
Why does that not fuss? Is it just... It must be inferring this lifetime for me. Because obviously it's going to need one. And since this is the only lifetime around and it works, it must just be filling that in on my behalf. Um, so then P and P and P and P and in fact uh I feel like we may not, and then that's going to need a P. Ooh. Expected GR something, but found GRP. It's like it doesn't know. Come here. Doesn't know what this is. I'm willing to bet this quick fix is not great. Oh. Maybe. Aha. Uh -huh. Problems up here. Yeah, thank you. Well spotted. Appreciate it. Okay, so yeah, problem was it needed to be added up there, and then everything's happy down here. Um, and then P and P and P. And then, is that actually all good? This seems overly specific here. Like that ought to be... Um, hmm, so it claims that all that compiles, but this seems to implement select only. Oh, I wonder, do we have, Huh. Because to implement selector, this should be a reference to P here. Oh. You think so? I mean, there's a bunch of other problems in generation that are going to need to be fixed. But this, this really does need to be a reference to P to line up with yeah, that thing there. Um, now, does... Is there anything that needs this to be...
uh, specifically an individual, I guess that's really where we're turning individual into an appropriate trait or set of traits would kick in because we probably don't need this to be an individual. We need it to be a type that knows how to do a few things. Um, and we could probably get away with a pop with this being a weaker thing than a population of individuals. Um, oh yeah. That's kind of nifty. Blarp. Oh, right, it's P. Sure, that makes sense. So, ah, uh, so now the return type doesn't have any of this generic clutter in it. And that probably, and then you're saying remove the individual in the type. Do you mean remove this here? And now then we'd want to actually change this to P individual. Oh, ah, can't do that without declaring that this is of type population or that P implements population. Which we're presumably going to have to do anyway. And then that makes that, and this is going to spread out through uh, P colon colon individual and that will then require that this implement population and we'll just dribble this along P colon colon individual ah Boom, and P implements population. Da, 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 da. And P colon colon individual. And then P implements population. This is probably very exciting television. Gripping TV. Um, and none of, okay, here we go. It's another one. P colon colon individual. And then we'll need P implements population. And that's the end of that. Okay. So now we should fix the uh, generation issues and then we'll, um, oh, so you're suggesting get rid of G and R here. Oh, because there's now no reference to them anywhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Uh, now, ooh, so does the fact that G, okay, this, that 
that would go away. And that goes away. And then this is going to need to be a reference to a population. So a reference to something of type P. Okay. Okay. Now that's interesting because then the the fact that those types have to be like ORD and SEND and stuff, that's just going to get moved around to somewhere else. I mean, it still has to be true. And so we'll still have to say it somewhere, but we don't say it here anymore. So the fact that G is EEK and R is ORD, that whole conversation is going to have to happen somewhere else. Um, this is going to be of type P. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, that it will clearly crop up eventually. The type checker will, will you know, one, it's pound of flesh. But yeah, that makes sense. There'll be a where someplace. Um, where, uh, we'll let the type checker yell at us. Okay, and then this needs to be P. And we get rid of G and R here. Get rid of G and R. Ah, so this is interesting. So lexicase requires that the result type B test results are and Without it, hmm. Oops, I lost. Um, I feel like we're gonna have a problem somewhere. Maybe not. Oh, right there. Expected reference to an individual in of type P and found a double reference. So is this just a matter of starring something? Apparently? That seems weird. Why did that not need starring before? Hmm. I don't know. It was somehow doing tidiness for us. Uh, okay, and then weighted won't need G and R. But it will need A. those go away, which means those go away, okay, so select has a bunch of warnings, well not a bunch, but some warnings, it no longer uses a bunch of, ah, so there's no reference to individual anymore, 
and there's no, no reference to the specific VECPOP, that makes sense, and there's no re reference to test results. That is really interesting. I would have, I guess I would have thought somehow test results was still going to be necessary, but I'll roll with it. If it's working, oh, let's see, VECPOP goes away and oh yeah that's maybe a good point let's not get too carried away um so let's go to generics um okay so this is now going to be type p and that should would have thought that would have failed because selector requires p to implement population and here we're not saying that p implements population maybe it's other issues so let's grind through the other changes now that does say th things about population um, Okay, P cannot be shared between threads safely. Um, so P is going to need to implement sync. And so that would go here. Whoa, that blew up the world. Um, come on. Uh, give me, here we go. From parallel iterators not satisfied. Okay, so that's a thing that I just didn't put in the trait yet. And so I need to either say that it implements it here with the plus thingy or implement it in um like say that trait impulse um uh okay so you're suggesting put it put it here and not on the trait itself okay so it needs parallel iterator from parallel iterator uh From parallel iterator. Boom. And that needs to say what we're doing, right? So we need the generic. Um, and I can't do something nice like just get away with that. No. No. Ooh, that was terrible. Didn't want to do that. Now we're going to need to say uh, what the thing is. And the thing is, oh, uh, it was telling me it was individual GR. Okay. So that worked. Ooh. And that broke a bunch of stuff in selector. That's interesting. Lifetimes do not match method. Hmm. Well, maybe we should go through generation first. Um, and yes, I think a where clause is absolutely in order here. 
because this is going to drive me nuts. Uh, I can't even... Yeah. So we need... Where... G is send and sync. And so this will just become G. And I don't know the syntax here. Um, that was not happy. Not item. Okay, let's look at an example. I want an example of the impl. Oh. Oh, the curly brace goes after the where. I bet that's my problem. Ha ha. That improved much shouting. Why are you? Oh, I bet it's not a semicolon. It's probably a comma or something. Yeah. Okay. So then R becomes, yeah, it probably is a comma. Send plus sync. Can I actually say G comma R? No. Oh well. It was a it was a shot. Um and so then we can get rid of this part. P and actually I'm just gonna copy all of this nonsense. Okay. That looks a whole lot shinier. Yeah. Thank you. Got there eventually, but you were faster than me. Um, and then here, the value of type P cannot be built from an iterator over elements of type individual. So I think this is where we needed P to implement from parallel iterator here. We need P to implement um, uh, Ooh, oh, that's interesting. So this impl, I need to split these two next, par next and next out because they require different properties of the population. Oh, okay. So really, I need that to be, grab that. That's gonna have to go there. That's gonna have to start there. This is gonna just need to be from iterator. And voila, that made that much better. So now, yep. Cool. And that's actually kind of nice because now we, it's clear what the dependencies are. This depends on that and this depends on, on this. So we're being more explicit about what the dependencies are. Um, unused import. I kind of feel like we might need that. Let's leave that alone. Um, so let's go back to select. Okay, lifetime parameters or bounds on method select do not match the trait declaration. Method not found in reference P. Oops. C. 
So lifetime and impulse do not match this method in the trait. Oh, because I don't have an A here. Ah, so that's probably where that problem was. Because I need that the lifetime, and really this, we should be saying pop and pop and pop. So the lifetime of the population has to match the lifetime of the individual. Um, yeah, that would be great. I'm hoping that you're right, that the child maker will do the same. We can do the same thing there. Um, and then eventually a whole bunch of, yeah, a whole bunch of GNRs should disappear and that'd be kind of nifty. Um, now, ah, so here, no method named iter found for, ah, so this is just a place where I haven't implemented a method in my trait yet. I haven't specified a method in my trait yet. So we need to, my trait needs to specify iter, iter, uh, item, no, individual. Oh, it would be self, individual. And then this doesn't implement that yet, so we need to fix that. Fn iter self. Iter self individual self dot individuals dot iter. Okay. Ah. Gotcha. So into iterator would give us a more flexible setup because saying iter directly here limits ourselves to vectors because that's what a dot iter on a vector returns. And we don't want to be that constrained. Okay. So we really want... Um, so you're suggesting that is Are you suggesting this? And let's see, we get rid of this. And so not what you're seeing. Comment out iter and go to where it is used. Ah, I see what you're saying. So actually then this is not going to be here. So where it's, where we were needed it, add the trait expectation there. Boom. So here, make this, I'm with you, from iter. So we ought to be, oh, into iter actually, because we're trying to make an iterator out of it. Into iterator. And then this needs to become 
uh, into uh, nope not that oh he mm, here gotcha so we're not saying it ampersand p into iterator item equals p individual no that was clearly not what you meant i am obviously flailing my apologies um so i don't have the right i think i don't have the right uh in the where clause oh in the where clause you're talking way back because i don't think i have any words here do i no so that's way over are you talking way back here in generation in a where clause back in the other place in a new where clause what 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 so here oops again i did it in the wrong place where p now, this doesn't seem right. Uh, yeah, into iterator item. So because it's a reference, it doesn't into iterator. So you think I need um, that to be into iterator. And then we get lifetime problems. And we don't have a here although i guess we could add a here and take a off of that and then oh but uh, is that really does that make sense um oh okay we can try that we undo where clause get us back where we were so that goes here. P ampersand P. Ah, and then we could put the type pound or the lifetime um, into iterator item equals p individual 
Uh, no, didn't like that. Maybe I take the lifetime off. No, didn't like that even more so. Lifetimes in the imp will not match the lifetimes in the trait. Presumably that's because this constraint isn't in the trait. And it needs to be. Um, so you think if I just put this in everything, it'll magically get better? Because I'm a little worried that this says that the lifetime in the impl doesn't match the method in the trait. Which makes me think this where needs to be in the trait also. Mm. And can I put this where in the trait definition? I say where uh, is that even? Oh, oh, I called it pop. Pop. I can put it there. And now this is not yelling at me. And this is. Fussing. No method named iter found for reference. So we've implemented into or required into iterator. Does this just need to be into iter? No, that was not a good choice. So P, oh, so I was right about into iter, but then expect a reference P as population individual, found P as population individual. Expect a reference lifetime found associated type. Consider constraining the associated type. Oh. So we have to say that the lifetime of the individual matches or can we just reference? Oh. Like that all compiles? At least the first. Okay. That maybe worked. So then we need this where clause on all these selects. So really, I want the curly brace too. Oh, hold on. I don't, do I need that on all of them? Uh, well, this we just we weren't even we don't even have best individual in the population anymore um, uh, 
Oh, you're saying if this was item that? And then I can get rid of the ampersand here. Is that what you're saying, I think? No, maybe not. Um, oh, and ch change this everywhere. So... Oh, it's pop. Oh, nice. So we're saying the items are references to individuals, which makes more sense because when we go through it, we want references to individuals. Okay, that's cool. And then we're grumpy here because we need this. Do we need that iterator thing? Oh, I guess maybe we should figure out what we're going to do about best individual because we do not have a population dot best individual anymore. Are we going to? Ha oh, no, it was in generation. Are we going to have a population best individual? Or should that really just be this selector's job and we don't do it over here? Because maybe it doesn't make sense to have it in population if we've got a selector that does it. Um, Because we've got is empty and we have iter. And so, yeah, I think you're right. I think we just move this code into the selector. Um, uh, let's see. I really just want this part. And then I'm going to comment out all of this. And I'll have to come back to that. Um, Okay, and this is um, repetitive and then we return that, make that go away. But we don't have, ah, so, oh, we just, we want um the population dot iter and now we do need this where clause because we're using the iter and so that's going to be necessary wah, 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 wah. Hello. Oh, it's into iter, duh. Yeah. Or not. Ah, we need ord. So we need P individual has to implement org. So this is where we run into that business. Um, P colon colon, no, P colon colon, individual implements org. No. So we'd have to say that 
in the trait definition, and it's interesting that, oh, you think this needs to be in the where clause of the impl, not in the method. Yeah. And then we don't have to worry about it matching. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that also... Okay, that, I like that, okay, yes. I was, I was, oh, ah, stop it. I was having grumpiness because I didn't like having to say that individuals were always implementing ORD because we didn't need it in random, for example. And if we put it here, it would have had to go in the trait and everywhere else. So putting it here says that just for this particular impl, P needs to, individual needs to be ORD. I like that much better. Um, okay, so that takes care of that. And then now we get the same mess. Oh, we need an iter, so we're going to have to have the same where clause on oh, no, that, that needs to become into iter. And I blew up the world. Uh, help. Oh, same problem. We need ORD because we got max. Okay. So. Where P individual implements ORD. Oh, stop it. Go away. Yep. And now, Lex case, who, oh, wow. Yeah, this could get weird. So we definitely need that. And this will become into iter. And test results. So this is going to be where we have to say that somewhere we're, we've got the test results um, as the result type. Uh, so that's a thing that has to be true about the individual. P, P individual has to be something. And it has to support asking for um, oh, so you're And then we'd have individual equal. And this is where it gets weird. Because we kind of have generic G and test results R. 
But we don't have GNR anymore. Uh, can I be just generic there and say nothing? No. Wouldn't have thought so. Uh, expected. Did I just set the wrong number of angles? Oh, I do. I don't have uh, enough right angles. Okay, yeah, it's not going to let you, let me do that. Um, that's too bad because we don't really care about G. I mean, we care about R sort of, but we don't really care about G. Um, I mean, and I can't. Well, actually, can't can't I? Can I do this? And that, I just need to import. Yeah. Oh, or is it test results, plural? Oh, it was test results, plural. Uh, that was here. That was that problem. Uh, oh, and then I guess when we make individual a trait, these things will fold into it as internal associated types. And then we won't need them here. But this works? Yeah, it seems to. Um, at least for now. Although, what is that telling me? Ah, we probably need some other constraints because somewhere down here we're going to need uh, to know things about R. Yep, right there. So R, what do we need? We needed partial ord and partial eek. And it didn't like, oh, I need a comma probably. Okay. So that all compiles, he says, not entirely trusting what's going on. It's also getting really light. We should stop soon. I was, be nice if I could get selectors to compile again, because I think we're down to just this last weighted business. Um, yeah, so we implement selector here. So you go down there and where P implements from iterator item equals P into a reference. Oh, into iterator, yes, thank you. Into iterator. Or not. Oh, I left the that guy off, and I'll leave that on the P individual. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So boom and boom. And still not happy. Oh, because A is already being used. Oh, curses.
No, uh, hang on. I'm flailing. Uh, P may not live long enough. Oh, is it's the problem that I don't have a lifetime on? Yeah. Uh, a. No, B. B. Okay. Woo. Now, all the code in select compiles. There's plenty of other problems in generation. Um, but we've run 40 minutes long and I know I am getting fuzzy. Uh, so I think we should punt and we will continue this on Saturday. Um, and so we'll need to finish getting this to compile. And then, as you said earlier, we'll want to get um, the child maker uh, to do its thing uh, and try to get rid of its generics. And then with a little luck, then we will be able to have, there won't be a GNR here anymore. And the GNR will disappear from this and be replaced with a C. Um, oh, and this is where this would become an S. So we'd have a P, an S, and a C here. And we wouldn't have the lifetime. So, and then we can slide in dynamic references to things when we create generations and it should all be swell and dandy. Um, so, okay. I like it. I like it. I'm tired, but I like it. So, and it's way later for a Zitsu, so I'm in no position to complain about being tired, right? Um, so you're awesome human beings. Thank you very much for spending uh, possibly close to three hours um, programming with me and providing feedback and good ideas. Um, I think this is, it's getting all like super rusty. I feel like I'm using all these like cool rust things. Um, and, uh, as opposed to just sort of writing Java code in Rust, I don't think it was quite that bad, but I think there's, um, you know, you kind of write the language that you know when you're learning a new language. Um, and, uh, this feels much more like, you know, we're actually getting to real Rust now. So go get some sleep peeps. If you, yeah unless you're in Japan or something and it's the morning, um, go get a nap and I will see everybody Saturday. So we should be, um, uh, here Saturday morning, 10 to noon. Um, hopefully working on the, um, ice repos thing. If I feel like I have, you know, got a plan that I trust and think will go forward and then, but definitely Saturday afternoon, we'll come back to this. I think that, um, the, uh, I want to focus on this and, and I think I've done enough with the labs, um, the systems labs for now. So I'm going to, I want I feel like we're making a lot of progress here and I want to put extra time in on this. So thank you all very much. I will talk to you later and have a good rest of your week. Ciao.